Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fi Trade for short, knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just going to go ahead and analyze all of the major markets and the major indices. Okay, first of all, dollar index. It's going down because Italy approves of austerity. Now, what this essentially means is that because the Italian government is going to be spending less money, there will, there, there will be less jobs. Okay, And a stimulus is anything extra of what you cannot possibly, uh, what you possibly don't have. So essentially, if Italy has a budget of, a, of let's say, $300 billion, but in that same year, Italy borrows $500 billion. Well, that extra $200 million is money that shouldn't exist, but exists anyway. Because the banking system requires you to essentially lend money, and through the process of lending, you increase the total supply of currency. Now, this doesn't make much sense unless you go back and study the banking system. But and understand how money is created because money is created by borrowing money okay and when a government borrows in excess of whatever they can possibly pay off in a fiscal year that extra money is considered stimulus and that stimulus is about to disappear because these governments have to come back into a budget surplus and budget surplus or budget balance is going to take many many years many 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 years and throughout that time, you're going to reduce spending. Reduction in spending means reduction in jobs because it's a reduction in consumption, reduction in borrowing. Borrowing creates money. When you have less borrowing by the government or no borrowing by the government, you reduce the currency supply immediately through just that alone. Next, less consumption. People who lose public sector jobs will no longer be able to pay off their mortgages. Mortgages get hurt. Banks lose confidence. Banks lose confidence, less money being lent. Less money being lent means even less money. Uh, it, it means even more severe economic recession. Essentially, what I'm anticipating out of Europe is an economic depression. Because what the government has done for the last 30 years has been humongous economic stimulus. By borrowing money, they cannot pay back by borrowing more money than what they had for a fiscal year to pay off. Essentially, they created an asset bubble. The government, the Italian government, and every major European government that is involved in the pigs is either going to default or going to cause severe, or, or, or they're going to bring about severe austerity. Both are very deflationary events. Both are going to cause economic contraction because economic contraction and deflation are very closely paired together based on how our economic system has been built. Okay, so that's the whole entire background behind what's going on. Let's go ahead and analyze the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It has, it has had two consecutive days. One has been a rising hammer. These are very negative, bearish. And this is a, a hammer. So this is a, this is a normal hammer and this is an inverse hammer. Whenever you have a double pa hammer pattern, at the top end of a short-term uptrend, here's the short-term uptrend, see, daily triangle, plus a hammer off of a short-term uptrend, and you have the implications of a pullback. Why? Because markets don't always, no, no, let me rephrase that, markets never go up continuously. It's usually something like this. It goes up a little bit, and then it comes down, and this is a downtrend, it goes up a little bit, and then it goes down. And then it goes up a little bit, and then it continues to go down, right? Now that's how this is how a downtrend is constructed. In this instance, you have a little bit of an upswing, a little bit of an upswing. Okay, you have this down move right here, and then you go back up a little bit to right there, and then this down move precedes this one. So this is your previous support. This is a next support. This is your previous resistance. Okay, so this is. This is this is this is your market, right? Right here. So this down move is being preceded by uh, you know, essentially lower lows and lower highs. That's a downtrend. Lower lows, lower lows, lower highs, right? And essentially, let's look at an even longer term chart. 
Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of the straight triangles because they are dwarfing the whole picture. Now let's look at it closely. In the case we, this is just a mini trend. This is this is a small trend and a much larger trend. Okay. Assuming that this that this is this is your top. Here's your downtrend right here. This is your first support. This is your second. This is your higher. High, this is your lower. You know. This is your first to low. This is your second lower high. This is your second lower low. This is your second lower high. Right? Because this is your previous high. This is your next high. Lower lower lows. Lower highs. Our highs were not able to beat those previous highs back in July 2011. So our next lower low, based on the incrementalness of how far we're going down, between this one and this one, and this one right here, one could probably anticipate 10,000, right? Because this is our next major support. So if we were to go back down, we could expect this downtrend to extend all the way down to 10,000. And this is a mini downtrend, and this is a longer term downtrend, right? This is a longer term downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, right here, right, right? Lower highs on this chart, this top, and this top. Lower lows on this top, this bottom, this bottom, and this next probable bottom at 10,000 to around 9,000. So this is basically what I see on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We are in a longer term downtrend and we are in a short term downtrend as well. Because this market right here wasn't able to beat its previous highs right here. And on the longer term chart, this high has not been able to beat this high. And this high right here wasn't able to beat this high. This low is lower. This low right here is lower than that previous low. And our next low is most likely going to be lower than this current low. Markets never continually fall. It's a gradual process over time. So keep that in mind. Guys. Just keep that in mind and you won't lose as much money. Period. Okay? Now let's examine what's going on in the Euro US dollar. Nice little bounce. Why? Because we have a conundrum here. In the event European governments fail at austerity and just go for default, the euro becomes completely worthless. So the faith in the euro will completely dissipate and we are flooding the euros into the US dollar. Or essentially asset managers are depressing the value of the euro in proportion to the US dollar by having excess demand in the US dollar. Okay? Now what happens when the European governments are successful at austerity while some of them aren't successful and go bankrupt? Well, nobody knows. Nobody knows if it's going to be a couple European states that comprise the Euro, which would just be Italy, Spain, France, and Germany. That could just end up being the Eurozone. Uh, or, or we just eject Greece and Portugal and Ireland and Belgium and a couple other countries nobody really knows nobody really knows but what we do know is that the euro is bad and trying to trade the euro US dollar on a conundrum of rapid deflation or complete abandonment of the currency because those are the two options we have right now either the euro ceases to exist and all the euros you have currently become worthless which I don't know how to explain what would happen to the banking system at that point because what happens to all those mortgages that were created based upon the euro? What are you going to pay back your mortgage with? What are banks going to receive in return for lending out euros when the euro becomes worthless? I don't have the answer to that question and I don't think I don't really think anybody does. What we could say though instead is chances are let's say the euro sticks around because I think there's a higher likelihood the euro sticks around because from a banking standpoint having the euro exist would be much more simple than it not existing anymore based on how many loans were created based on the, on the assumption that they were going to be they were going to be repaid in euros okay what happens I don't know but I think the euro will stick around so essentially I think and this is just my belief that if we have austerity in Europe and we have austerity in the United States, who is going to cut more spending? Who's going to cut more money? Who's going to have more deflation? 
who is going to be the worst amongst the two. And that's whoever's the worst amongst the two will have the more valuable currency. If the US falls into a much deeper recession than Europe, the US dollar will have more value than the euro. If Europe falls into a more severe recession than the United States, then the euro will have more value than the euro, US dollar because the euro becomes much more scarce than the US dollar is to US citizens than the euro is scarce to its European counterparts, right? So that's my anticipation. But let's take the middle ground and avoid all of that. Let's just take our euros and turn them into Japanese yen. Because Japan has a humongous amount of credit. They can borrow money from their citizens and they've shown themselves to continue to be able to do so. Japan's debt is owned 95% by Japanese citizens. So even if a bunch of banks were to abandon Japan for some weird reason, I don't know, it would only mean 5% of the debt would be sold to the remaining 90% of 95% of buyers. So, and let's not forget, the Japanese yen is continuing to appreciate against both the US dollar and the euro. Why bother playing the euro or, Jap the, euro or the United States game? Just go into Japan, protect your money by avoiding this conundrum of who's worst, Europe or the United States? Who cares? <laughs> you couldn't really predict who's going to have the worst end of the stick because both are going through austerity anyway. What I would say is to go into Japan. Main reason being is that Japan has the ability to pay off loans by continuing, continuing to borrow money from its citizens to pay off previous debt. Eventually, Japan will no longer be able to do this, but that's maybe 20, 30 years down the road. We'll worry about it then. For now, protect the money by not putting it in Europe or the United States, but in Japanese reserves. Take care, folks, and I'll go ahead and see you guys another time. If you have questions, leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Take care.